Hallelujah, 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 horandi arabasi. Welcome in, welcome in, family, hallelujah. I am here a little early. The spirit is stirring. Handa horandi arabasi. So we can just begin to worship the name of the Lord. God, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy, Father. You are mighty. Hallelujah. God, there is none like you. Father, there is none like you. There is none like you. Yes, God. Father, may your glory go ahead of us today. May your glory enter the homes of every person that tunes into this. Rather it be now or later, O oh God, allow your glory to go forth into their homes. Homes, God. May you arrest them in your spirit as you release great wisdom and knowledge and understanding today, Lord. Father, I pray that you use me mightily for your glory, oh God. God, I put aside my thoughts. I put aside my feelings. I put aside my emotions, oh Lord. And I say, God, use me. Use me, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you for your fire. We thank you for your presence being present in this room oh lord we give you glory hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah great and mighty god Great mighty God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Great mighty God. Great mighty God. We worship you. We worship you, hallelujah. You stand alone. You stand alone. You stand alone. God, you stand alone. You stand alone. God, you stand alone. You stand alone. You stand alone. God, you stand. Mm-hmm. You stand alone. God, you stand alone. You, you stand alone. Hallelujah. You stand alone. Handi orandi arabaso. All we need is you. All we need is you. Hallelujah. There is a healing anointing in the room. There is a healing anointing in the room. Hallelujah. There's a healing anointing in the room. He's here. He's healing. Hallelujah. He's here. He's healing. I see the Lord just healing um, broken hearts. Hallelujah. Healing broken hearts. Hallelujah. P- people that have become bitter. When it comes to the topic of love and what it symbolizes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says he is mending. He is mending. Father, I just pray, oh Lord, I partner with you in the realm of the spirit, oh God. I just see you beginning to pour out the oil of myrrh, oh God. Pour it out on every wound in their heart every form of bitterness God may it turn into a sweet fragrance that can be used for your glory that can be used to attract their mate that can be used to cause uh, relationships to come back together strained marriages to be strengthened hallelujah father 
May the sweetness, O oh God, of your fragrance come forth as they are being healed. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now. Hallelujah, what you're doing right now. Yes, God. For some of you, God is saying, put both of your hands on your heart. He's saying this is a prophetic act. Put both of your hands on your heart and say, by the grace of God, I am healed today. I am healed from heartbreak today. He's telling you to put both of your hands on your heart and say, by the grace of God, I am healed today. I am healed of heartbreak today. I am healed of bitterness today. I am remorseful. Um, the stronghold of, um, of bitterness is removed from me today. Hallelujah. 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 So you shall not infect your marriage with bitterness. You shall not infect your friendships with bitterness. You shall not infect anything that the Lord places in your hands with bitterness. You shall not infect your children with bitterness. Hallelujah. But instead you shall be a sweet, pleasing aroma to those around you. A sweet, pleasing aroma to your husband. A sweet, pleasing aroma aroma to your children hallelujah may they say we rejoice in our mom she is a proverbs 31 type of a woman hallelujah where the husband and the children that they take great joy in you hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah father we give you glory god we thank you for the healing and the breakthrough that just occurred Hallelujah. And oh, wow, it is 222. Look at the Lord. So you guys, let's begin teaching because we have a lot to go through today. I highly recommend that you guys have notes. All right. And so um, I should have had the scripture pulled up, but don't judge me. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up again. Genesis 224. All right. So Genesis 224, it says, this is why. Oh, Y'all, this is a loaded teaching. And so I forgot what the Lord told me to say. So this teaching is called one. Okay. This teaching is called one. The two shall become one. And so the Lord wants you to know today that first you shall receive a teaching. But then after he said there will be a prophetic release. So there is something that God wants me to do. I can't tell you that until the end of the video. So if you're here stay until the end or you leave come back whatever it's you and God but you need to make sure that you are in this room if God led you to this teaching make sure you stay and listen and I have to make this very clearly today's teaching is for those who are single it is for those who are uh, about to be married it's for those who are already married okay it's for all of y'all so the teaching, so you're going to hear me at times speak about marriages. You're going to hear me speak about this. However, marriage correlates to you. If you are a single person, you are married to your creator. If you are a person in waiting, you are being joined in the spirit with your husband, the one God has for you, but you are also married to God. Amen. And then if you are married, you are literally joined in union with God and your husband. OK, so you have that spiritual marriage with God, with your husband, that union. But you also have the physical manifestation of the marriage. So wherever you fall. Now, if I speak from the perspective of a woman, it's because I'm a woman. But men apply it how it applies. Amen. And so today's teaching is titled one the two shall become one amen and so let's first read genesis 2 24 new international version it says that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh amen so that is the basis of our study today and so what is our primary focus our primary focus today is oneness. So God desires physical and spiritual marriages that are based in oneness with him. In oneness, there is synchronicity, but there is also harmony. Okay, so when I speak of synchronicity and harmony, what I'm speaking of is peace and wholeness. So when we look at the 15th Hebrew letter, Semek, S-A-M-E-K-H, 
it represents this wholeness. And when you look in Strong's Concordance, 1515 is the Greek word irene, irene, irene. It means one, peace, quietness, rest. It's God's gift of wholeness in the form of peace. And so what I'm giving you right now is that when God speaks of synchronicity and harmony, he's speaking of the significance of the Hebrew letter Semek, which is the 15th letter. The number 15 is a number that represents peace. We're going to talk more about it below. But again, the teacher in me, I will be clarifying things as I go along so I don't lose you. All right, next. Second Chronicles. So we just looked at 1515 Irene. Irene. So this is one peace, quietness, rest. It's God's gift of wholeness. So how does God give you wholeness? He grants you peace. You see a revelation the Lord gave me the reason why the one person that came back when they were healed, the one leopard that came back when they were healed, the reason why the Lord said you have been made whole is because he came back to the source is because he returned back. So the Lord's peace was able to rest on him. He gave him peace. So it wasn't really just wholeness. He gave him peace. What does Jesus say when you come to a house and the house is good to you on your journey? He says that you put your peace on it and it is something about that house because think about it that person treats you with love he said when they reject you though you remove your peace so the peace of God is his gift of wholeness I wasn't that's not a part of my lesson but that's just a different revelation for a different time so now we've gotten to this point where we understand that the number 15 represents peace which is God's gift of wholeness so when God says, I will make you whole, he's saying, I will give you peace. Now, when we read 2 Chronicles 15, 15, notice this number is following us. It says, and all Judah rejoice at the oath, the oath, a.k.a. the covenant. For they had sworn with all their hearts and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them and the Lord gave them rest round about. The Lord gave them rest on all sides. So what are the key phrases here? They swore with their heart. They sought him with their whole desire in mind. And he gave them rest. So what is the point, Sunray? When you seek oneness with God in your spiritual marriage to him and in your physical marriage, God gives you the gift of wholeness, which we know today is peace. But as long as you are listening to another voice, a.k.a. being Eve in the garden, you bring in room for separation. So what is God's point? Unity and oneness is a requirement. And so this part that I just spoke, this serves as the basis for our lesson today. Oneness. All right. Let's go to the next part. Let me get a little bit more comfortable. Okay. So let's focus on, I'm going to be speaking about three different symbolisms when it comes to marriage. Okay. I'm going to focus on the ring. I'm going to focus on the heart and I'm going to focus on the womb. When I say womb, I mean like where you plant a seed. Okay. So I'm focusing on the symbolism of the ring, the heart and the womb. And so first, let's focus on the ring. So everybody knows what a ring looks like. It's a circle with a big old diamond, with a big old diamond. Amen. Even though it don't matter, but a big old diamond. Continuing on, <laughs> the girls love the diamonds. We love the eyes. See, see eyes. You see what I did there? Okay, continuing on. <laughs> the glory of the Lord is so heavy. So I ha I have to make a little joke, a little jokey joke every now and again because look, y'all, my chest is on fire over here. I'm I'm literally about to, uh, I'm burning up. Amen. And so continuing on. So now we're focusing on the symbolism of the ring. So when God was speaking about the ring, He said the ring represents the fifteenth Hebrew letter, class. What did we just say the ring represents? We said that the ring represents the 15th Hebrew letter Semek, which is not the ring. What does Semek represent? It represents peace. The number 15, God's gift of wholeness. 
And so when we look at what this letter means in Hebrew, it means wholeness, completion, the all-encompassing support of God, but it also connects to restoration, okay? So Zechariah 2 and 5 says, And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. So we will use this scripture to break down the symbolism of the ring. Because remember, Zechariah 2 and 5 says, And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. So let's focus on the inside of a ring. So you know how you have the ring, you got the outside. Let's focus on the inside. The Lord said the inner, the inner part of the ring represents the inner sanctuary. The inner sanctuary is a place of worship and true intimacy with God. So when we study the Hebrew word for this inner sanctuary, specifically referenced in Solomon's temple, we see this comes from Strong's Concordance 1687. From Strong's Concordance 1687. And it comes from the Hebrew word debir. And so this word means inner sanctuary. But what is the root origin of this word? The root origin of this word uh, is Strong's Concordance 1696, Strong's Concordance 1696, and it comes from the Hebrew root that it means to speak. Why is the name of the inner sanctuary connected to a word that it means to speak? Because it is in the inner sanctuary, it is in the Holy of Holies that the Lord speaks. We see this when um, Moses built the temple or built the tabernacle. And he said, I will meet you at this place, the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting was the holy of holies. It was where the Lord would speak to them. Amen. And so remember, we're talking about the inside of the ring, not the outside, the inside. So God likens the inner sanctuary to a fortress. When you are inside the ring, when you are inside your marriage, it is a place of protection, security, and concealment. This is why it is important singles, married people, dated people, wherever you fall. This is why it's important that you cultivate intimacy through worship with God. And why is it important? One it establishes codependency on him. Y'all not just codependent on each other. You're not just codependent on yourself when you're alone as a single person, but you develop codependency on God. And what happens is it releases his glory. Remember, it says, and I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. So the glory of the Lord is located where? In the Holy of Holies, a.k.a. the inner sanctuary. So inside of your marriage, a place of worship must be cultivated. A relationship of true intimacy with God must be cultivated. And the reason why that is, is so that God can dwell in in the mist and so you get the benefits of being in that place because in, a, in the inner sanctuary he likens it to a fortress it's a place of protection it's a place of provision amen it's a place of security and concealment and so the other thing uh, that's important about this inner place about why it's so important to cultivate intimacy through worship with God is because it leads to accelerated restoration. Remember, the number 15 also connects to completion and restoration. A lot of you, your marriage was sent by God. It's a gift by God to fully restore you. It's the gift of wholeness. And so how can I say that it leads, the glory of God leads to accelerated restoration being present in your marriage? The glory of God exists in Kairos. We, K-A-I-R-O-S, we exist in Kronos, C-H-R-O-N-O-S. The glory of God exists in Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S. The glory, I mean us, we exist in Kronos, C-H-R-O-N-O-S. This is 
the time, the clocks. We exist in time. This is 5D. God exists outside of time. And so when the glory of God, when his presence is in your marriage, it causes things to accelerate because he exists outside of time. Therefore, things happen quicker. Amen. And how can I say your restoration is accelerated in your marriage when God is in your midst? Because let's look at Ruth and Boaz. He said in Ruth 2.12, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. So notice he said, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. He was referencing the fact that in her single season, Ruth understood the assignment. She understood that she needed to be underneath the wings of somebody. So whether it had been anybody else, she knew that it had to be God. Because it was in that place that he was preparing her. It was in that place he was guiding and directing her. She could hear his voice. Because remember, the inner sanctuary, the holy of holies, it's the place where you are shielded. It's the fortress of God. It's where he speaks to you. So she knew what field to go to. And so how can I say this is connected to a swift restoration? When he was speaking to her, Boaz means swift. So when Boaz showed up in the picture with Ruth, her because they were married in spirit because the lord was united them together her restoration came forth quickly hallelujah her restoration came forth quickly hallelujah and so what is the symbolism of the inner sanctuary the symbolism of the inner sanctuary the marriage is likened to eden Okay, the marriage is likened to Eden. It is a place of oneness and unity with God. Everything needed is supplied by God. The voice, I just have to say this, you guys, please make sure that you stay on focus. If there are people in the comments that come in and are saying things, do not allow them, don't even reply to them. Allow them to comment, allow them to say whatever it is they want to say, because they're going to keep coming back. And I'm telling you this by the spirit of the Lord. This is a divine assignment. When I tell you, you have to pay very close attention to this teaching. So do not pay attention to the comments. Pay attention to my voice. Pay attention to the teaching because some of you, the, the release that is about to happen, the enemy is coming in and he wants to deter you. But I'm telling you by the spirit of God, do not pay attention to the comments. Some of you, it's no point for you to be commenting, right? Because you should be taking notes. So let's address this right now. Focus on the teaching. Focus on the teaching. Because the Lord is doing something here. Amen. Continuing on. So remember, we just talked about how Boaz means swift. And so now let's go to the symbolism of the inner sanctuary. We're focusing on the inside of that ring. God says this symbolizes Eden. It's a place of oneness and unity with God where everything you need is supplied by God. The voice of the Lord speaks clearly to you because he is in the midst. There is no shame and condemnation in this place. And so the thing about Eden, Eden was a beautiful, it was a peaceful place. And so what happened? Until there were slithering voices. And so a part of having this inner sanctuary in your marriage with God, but also with your earthly mate, is that you have to be careful of the slithering voices. Just like how right now this is all of us united with God. And we have a slithering voice that came in. If some of you began to pay attention to that slithering voice, you have now slipped outside of alignment. You have now slipped outside of unity with God. You see, you have to be able to hear the voice of the enemy. You have to be able to hear what he's saying. Not, not you have to be able to, but you have to be able to hear what he says and still rebuke it. You have to be able to hear what he says and still focus on God. You can't allow the pettiness of the kingdom of darkness to pull you out of that Eden or to twist or to, to distort that which the Lord is speaking or teaching you. Amen. And this is so important for the marriage. 
because you're going to have slithering voices, people that are going to try and slip in and say different things. Oh, well, you know, he don't die. And oh, you know, this, that, that. It's a reason why the marriage is between you, God and your husband or you, the, the Holy Trinity. If y'all single, like I said, ap apply it so it can fly with you. Amen. And so the point is that you don't allow outside voices to do because what happens with the outside voices it defiles the marriage bed it's the equivalent to you doing work in your bed you guys are talking about the the bed is a place of intimacy why are you talking about work why are you bringing the the things of the world into your place of intimacy and then you're slowly wondering why you guys are separating because the bed is a place of intimacy you should be intimate with one another in conversation. Remember, intimacy is not just intimate things, right? In that way, the physical intimacy, right? There's many different ways for you to be intimate with your mate. Defiling the marriage bed goes into different ways, right? But slithering voices is one way. That's why when your mate does certain things or when, when you are frustrated in your relationship with God, you go to God about it. Too many outside voices will cause you to slip away. It causes a separation because now that person's voice is in your ear and you're twisting what your husband said. Your husband didn't even say that. But now because you spoke to somebody else, you allowed that slithering voice in. Now you have created a separation in the place that there was supposed to be unity. So that was the inside of the ring. Let's talk about the outside of the ring. Remember the scripture we're using. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord. And I will be its glory within. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it. So the outside of the ring is the ring of fire. The outside of your marriage, there shall be a ring of fire around your marriage. Hallelujah. There shall be a ring of fire around your marriage. The Lord says there is a boundary established when you marry with him and when you marry with your physical husband. And there's this boundary because it, this boundary must be established to consecrate, to separate the marriage from defilement. If both of you are on fire for God, if both of you are constantly seeking the presence of God and in his voice, those slithering voices, they can't even get in because by the time they reach it, they done been burnt up. Amen. And so this is why it's important that in your season of preparation, you become a wife that seeks the voice of God. You become a man that knows the voice of God. You become a man that dwells in Eden like Adam operating in your purpose. You become a wife dwelling in the field that the Lord told you to dwell in, doing what he told you to do so that when the time comes that it'll be too so it'll be two fiery cherubims that come together. And if we look at the mercy seat. If we look at the mercy seat, you want your marriage to be a, a place that God, God's glory dwells. And how was the mercy seat formed? It has two cherubim, which are the fiery angels. They come together and what dwells in the midst, the Shekinah glory, the blue flame of God's glory. So when you so you need to be on fire for God before you meet a man, you need to be on fire for God before you meet a woman, because when y'all two come together, you have now created a union that God's glory can dwell in where you can be a miracle sign and wonder to all in the world. Amen. And so this is why it is so important that you have your own fiery relationship with God. That's just another revelation on top of this. Amen. Continuing on. The boundary is God's ring of fire. What is this ring of fire? There are parameters in place to keep holy what God calls holy. The marriage is meant to be holy. The world has defiled what a marriage is. But in the kingdom, but as for you, as for you being in God's house, there are parameters you must keep in your marriage to maintain consecration, to maintain holiness. Exodus 16, 28 says, then the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? 
There are things that the Lord will command of you and your husband, and you have to ensure that you do those things. There are things as a single man, as a single woman, that the Lord has commanded and instructed you, and you have to keep those, keep those things to stay within the boundary, to stay within the fire, to keep his fire around you. Because what's one thing we know about God? Anything that is not holy, anything that is not purified, the Lord can't stand next to you. He burns you up. Instead of him being the fire that protects you, he's the fire that burns you up. The all-consuming, destroying fire of God. He becomes executioner instead of your protector. This is why it's so important that you, if God telling you don't drink, if he's telling you certain things, you listen. These things are not to put you in a box. These things are not to make you less than. These things are to prove the goodness of the Lord and his protecting of you. And so what is the symbolism of this ring of fire? The marriage is likened to a crucible. For people who don't know a crucible in chemistry, you use a crucible to like burn and to set stuff on fire. But really, it's used to refine and purify things. Right. And so your marriage is a place of constant refinement to bring you to a place of completion and total purification. So you'll always be purified when you're in your relationship with God. You'll always be purified when you're in a relationship with your spouse. Amen. <clears throat> So that there concludes the symbolism of the ring. Now let's go to the symbolism of the heart. So when we discuss the heart, we can combine the mind, the will, and emotions into one. So here we're going to look at the 21st Hebrew letter, Sheen. So when you look at this letter, it looks like three branches of a flame. Hallelujah. It looks like three branches of a flame. Hold on guys, give me one second. The Lord is telling me to do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Yeshande de orandi arabaso de de eshe ke adashunda rabasi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, continuing on. <sighs> Hallelujah. So when we discuss the hearts, we can combine the mind, the will, and emotions into one. And so the 21st Hebrew letter is the letter Sheen. So when you look at the pictograph of this, it looks like three branches of a flame. So it's like boop, 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 like three flames. And so each of those flames represent the mind, the will, and the emotions. And I'm going to tell you how you understand that. So, this 21st Hebrew letter also connects to peace. It connects to that restoration. It connects to that wholeness. Because remember, when you become one with God, he gives you the gift of wholeness, a.k.a. peace. So, what happens when you seek God with your mind, your will, and your emotions? You encounter the fire of God. The 21st Hebrew letter has those three flames. When you seek God with your mind, your will, and your emotions, you encounter the presence of God, which is his fire. I pray that this is making sense. Some of you may need to re-listen to this to understand it. I have too much to go through to keep going over it, so I'm going to continue on. Because the fire is his presence. Remember, the marriage is like a crucible. It is used to refine. And so, what is the importance of the mind, seeking God with the mind, the will, and the emotions to have this fire? Scripture says in Matthew 5 and 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. For they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So purity is connected to sight. How does one get pure? Well, first... You have to encounter the fire of God. How do you encounter the fire of God? You must draw close to his presence. How do you draw close to God? You seek him with your mind, your will, and your emotions. 
So do you see how seeking God with all your mind, will, and emotions causes you to activate this 21st Hebrew letter Sheen? Explanation. The seeking, the seeking with your mind, will, emotions, remember the fire, it leads you to encounter his fiery presence. His fiery presence purifies you and it causes you to be able to see him. Remember, it is the eyes of the heart that the light of Christ goes into to cause you to understand revelation, to cause you to see God. It's all about the heart. Remember, 2 Chronicles 15 and 15 says that when they swore with their heart and sought them with all their desire, he was found. And what was the result? There was peace on all sides. So again, this is the imagery of marriage being the ring of God's fire, but also the inner sanctuary. So not only are we focusing on the symbolism of the ring, but also of the heart. Your heart must seek the Lord with your mind, your will, and your emotions to constantly encounter the fire of his presence. So he purifies you so you're able to see him. And God said, when you seek God, when you seek me with all your heart, he says you enter into my heart, a.k.a. the inner sanctuary, a.k.a. Eden. The Eden is actually the heart of God. That's what it symbolizes. Eden is actually the heart of God. When you seek him with all your heart, you enter the heart of God. You get into a place of protection. You get into a place where he speaks to you. You get into a place where he provides for you. You get into a place where he helps to establish your purpose, which we're going to talk about later. You get into that place where you're in harmony and unity. There's no way for you to seek God with your heart, your mind, and all of your emotions and not enter into his heart and not have harmony with him and not have unity with him and not be able to hear him. It all comes together. And so what is the point of the heart in a marriage? God needs you to have an undivided heart. So remember, this is not just about you actually being married to a person. This is about you being married to your creator. Psalm 86 and 11 says in the CEB version, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely there that leaning thing on your faithfulness. It says, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Let's fast forward to Colossians 3.22. It says, servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as people pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Here again, we see undivided singleness of heart, fearing God. Because when you fear the Lord, you have such a reverence for him. You have such an honor for him that your only focus is on uniting with him as long as you people please and focus on man in your marriage this is in the marriage with your creator and in your marriage with your husband or your wife you are not united with God because to be united means y'all are on the same path how are you on the same path with God when you busy worrying about what the world is doing when you're busy trying to follow the ways of the world, your, your loyalty is divided. You are a double-minded person. You are unstable in all your ways. You can't be trusted. Even in a marriage, a double-minded person, you can't be trusted. You told me you love me today, tomorrow you hate me. Do you get what I'm saying? And so when it comes to the heart and the symbolism of marriage, the heart the hallelujah if you had to picture it i will put the ring inside of the heart because the heart is the heart of god your marriage is a gift from god's heart to you the ring that god gives is a gift from him to give to your husband to give to you because when your husband gives you a ring He's saying, I have chosen to give you my heart. That's why, men, if you aren't ready to give her your heart, why are you proposing? God gives us his heart when he's preparing us, when he teaches us how to be a wife. So, husbands, you have to learn in your single season to give your heart to the one God has for you. Because 
It is her duty as a wife. Remember Proverbs 31. It says that a wife, she holds the counsel of her husband's heart. Like she's, she's the one that's in charge of her husband's heart. I'm really paraphrasing, but y'all know the scripture. Amen. And so let's go to the last one, the womb. Okay, the womb. When I think when I say womb, I mean like uh, W O M B. So, what is the symbolism of the womb? So now this brings us to the fourteenth Hebrew letter, Nun. And so the pictograph is a fish, a seed, and humility. So humility requires submission for growth to happen. So in your marriage, the wife has to be submitted. But also the husband has to be submitted. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We thank you for being in the room. We thank you for being in the room. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We lift your name on high. God, we lift your name on high. And Father, I just come into agreement. We rebuke every evil spirit that's present on, the, present on this life, attempting to cause distractions, attempting to cause destruction of that which you are doing. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the fire of the Holy Ghost begins to locate those evil monitoring spirits and that it consumes them and this sends the dust into the abyss. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that any hindering spirit, oh God, that any monitoring spirit, oh God, that they be completely and utterly destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire be on you. Fire be on you. Fire be on you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The fire of God consume you. The fire of God consume you. The rebuke of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory. We magnify you. God, this is your life. Your spirit is on this. You are surrounding this. You are encompassing us. You have sent your angels to watch over us. So we rebuke every enemy. We rebuke the devourer attempting to come and pull this seed away from those who you have said it is their time. Hallelujah. We give you glory, hallelujah, and we worship you, Hande Orandi Arabasi, hallelujah. Father, my Father, we worship you, hallelujah. We worship you, hallelujah, hallelujah. So continuing on, we're focusing on the womb, okay? And so we're speaking about the 14th Hebrew letter, Nun, N-U-N. And so the pictograph of this letter is a, a fish, a seed, but it also represents humility. And also, too, it does represent the womb. I just remembered that. It also represents the womb. But in the marriage, submission is required for growth to happen. And so the wife must be submitted to the husband. The husband must be submitted to the Godhead. Amen. There is an order and God has that order for a reason. And so if you are a single person, a single woman, and you are having an issue submitting to God, get that in order. Because if how do you expect to submit to your husband if you aren't submitted to your husband? your first husband, your first love. You have to be able to submit to God. You have to be able to pivot when he tells you to pivot. You have to have an obedient, quiet, humble spirit before the Lord. I could go into more uh, revelation about the spirit of a wife and the, the wisdom God gave me, but that's not for right now. I'll just tell you 
You need to learn to submit to God. If you are, know that you are having issues submitting to God, and I'm speaking to the wives out there, I'm speaking to those who are in preparation. If you have issues submitting to leadership and you have been praying about marriage, you need to switch, switch your prayers and pray for the Lord to help you have a submissive spirit. Because if you do not submit to God, if you do not submit to your leaders, you will not submit to your husband. It will be an issue in your marriage. And with that, you will hinder your growth and you will also hinder the growth of your husband. It is important that you learn to submit. You must have a quiet, humble spirit. Nobody said you got to be quiet. A quiet, humble spirit, a teachable spirit. Your husband has to minister to you. He has to teach you. But if you aren't submissive, you won't receive the word of your apostle. You won't receive the word of your prophet. You won't receive the word of your businessman, whoever your husband is. The husband is supposed to teach his wife. That's why men, you have to have your own relationship with God. Your first ministry is your wife. You got to minister to your wife. You have to teach her the principles of God. That is a part of the relationship and the Lord is telling me to say that so I'm not sure who that's for because that's not in my notes but that's what the Lord is saying so women I'm gonna beat a dead horse because this is so important learn to submit to God how do you know you aren't submitting God told you to wake up at 3 a.m every day and you haven't been doing it God told you to do this like it's the little things that reveal what it is that's truly in your heart and this is not to judge you or anything like that no we're all in process but i'm saying you have to set a standard so before you keep praying for the marriage to come pray god that i submit better to you because your earthly marriage is just a reflection of what's going on in the spirit and so humility it's required the submission is required before God and also before your husband, like your physical husband and your physical wife, because men, you have to also be submitted. And so um, to the Godhead, the seed part. So the seed speaks of reformation, the growth and the genesis. So you are the seed. And if you are married or coming into marriage, you and your husband are the seed. But also, when you and your husband come into this marriage, you're both in seed form. So when God puts you in the marriage, he's putting both of you in a womb. Okay? He's putting both of you in a womb. So you are a seed. Your husband is a seed. But also, the other seeds that come with you, you as a wife, there are words that the Lord has spoken over you. Those seeds come with you into the marriage. There are seeds that the Lord has spoken over the life of the husband. That comes in, in with you in the marriage. And then there are seeds that God releases over you together. And so there's just a whole lot of seeds. Okay? So y'all seeds, y'all got y'all individual prophetic words about the things that ain't even going that don't even come to pass until y'all are together. There are some seeds God is giving you. There are some words that God is giving you about your life that won't come to pass until you're in this womb because there's something special about the and sacred about the marriage covenant and the speed at which things move when everybody submitted to God. I'm getting off track, but the whole point is that you are a seed. When God places you and your husband in this womb, you are being formed and shaped in the way that God attends. Because y'all think, oh, I made it that I became a wife. No, you, the whole process start over. Literally, when you and you, the whole purpose of God bringing you and your husband together is symphonesis. And symphonesis is the Greek word in Strong's Concordance 4851, where God takes two excellent people to create something more excellent. That's why you have to be whole before you get married, because not only do you already have to be a benefit to society and a benefit to the kingdom of God, but God brings things together that will be a greater benefit for him, a greater benefit for his glory. So you a movement by yourself, but y'all a force when y'all together, baby, I'm good all by myself, but baby, you, you make me better. And so that's the point. You're a movement by yourself, but you're a force when you're together. And what is that force? That glory of God. It's so important that you be good by yourself, 
but even better together. That's why God brings things together. It should be better, not worse. Okay. And so we have humility, which is the submission that's required for the growth to happen. We have the seed, which is your genesis, your marriage. You should become greater in your marriage. Greater work shall you do once you become a wife. Greater work shall your husband do once he becomes a husband. If y'all are literally going the opposite direction, something's wrong. Continuing on. The fish. How, do, how does the symbolism of the fish fit? So the fish is the fruit of the seed being cultivated. The fish are the people that will be impacted by the glory of God that's released in your marriage. The fruit, the, the fish are the fruit. It is the harvest of the kingdom that the Lord had foredestined or predestined when he said you and so and so are coming together. You and so and so are coming together because he doing a great harvest over there. You're doing a great harvest over there. But together, oh, y'all just took over a whole continent. So the fish is the fruit because this is what leads to multiplicity. And we've experienced this, right? Certain marriages in our neighborhoods and things like that that have been together for such a long time. And they've been so impactful in our lives. And so the fish is the harvest of the marriage. That's used to glorify God and bring souls into his kingdom in greater measure. So what is the overall symbolism of the womb? It is a tool used by God to bring forth spiritual completion that bears fruit in the physical and brings great harvest forth for God's kingdom. So your marriage not about you. We went from the inside to the outside, and then we talked about the heart, right? Because the marriage, the, the ring is inside the heart of God, because your marriage is a gift from God. Amen. It is a gift. Your husband is a gift. Ladies, you are a gift. So ladies, don't, don't respond like Ruth. Who am I to find favor in your sight? Look, because look, one thing Ruth didn't understand, he who findeth a wife finds a good thing and gets what? Favor favor so Ruth don't you forget that you are Rebecca remember Rebecca came with the camels Rebecca came with the camels when we saw Isaac coming towards us Isaac was just coming Rebecca came with the camels so I break off any sense of unworthiness or whatever the case may be you bring the favor of God and how do you bring the favor of God and this is for women in preparation you have to become a woman that is a worshiper you have to become a woman that is a prayer you have to become a woman that seeks God because of your obedience and staying at the Lord's feet you carry glory and what comes with God's glory favor mercy everything your, your force of favor is greater as a wife, the deeper you are in relationship with God. That's why you see some people's marriages being paid for and things like this happening, all types of things because, or the husband just skyrockets because you know that woman was in the prayer closet. You know that woman because as soon as there is a force of favor that comes with a woman that has been prepared in a secret place as soon as she starts even dating as soon as her husband even sends her a message suddenly a deal that didn't go through for 10 years comes through suddenly resources begin to come with him because the, that wife carries the force of God's favor she carries the favor of Esther. May your prayers be, Lord, teach me how to be a worshiper so that I can carry the force of Esther, so I can carry a force of favor. May I carry a favor so strong that every family member like me, that everybody that's in his circle likes me, and they don't even know why, but it's the force of favor because God, when you are in his glory, when you are covered in him, that's why I say the best gift as a wife that you can give your husband is the fragrance of God's presence. Earthly things can be quickly added. You can always get money. You can always change your weave. You can always put weave in your hair. You can always uh, start working out, get your body done, all this other stuff. <laughs> but, but the favor of God, that has to come from a cultivated place of intimacy. You can't, go, you can't go buy the favor of God off a shelf. You can't go spray the perfume of God off a shelf. You got to be pressed for that. You got to be crushed for that. You got to go through your process for that. I pray somebody's hearing me. It's, an, it's, an, it's a reason why you as a wife have to go in through a process. God needs you to carry favor. 
Rebecca carried something because that man brought her camels. He brought her jewelry. So when she showed up, her camels already came. She like, look, your dad already, my dad, because when we look at it, Abraham really represented God in that story. God supplies, <laughs> look, the somebody needs to hear me clearly. The favor of God comes with provision. When you show up with your husband, he's going to be like, whoa, the favor on you. When I met you, my whole life has changed since you came in. I knew that then. And for people who say that the Lord don't um, like R&B romantic songs, you a liar. There are certain songs he will not let me listen to, but there are certain love songs like Luther Vandross. Come on. The Lord actually be speaking and his spirit be resting. He like, oh, I want you to play that. That was Siri. And so the reason why I say that is because I just got to say this. Scripture says don't awaken love too early. I wish I would have known and understood this. Some of y'all are listening to music that you should not be listening to because you're not in that season. Some of y'all are listening to music that you should not be listening to because you're not in that season. You're opening doors to things that should not be open. And you talk to the Lord for that revelation. Amen. But I just wanted to throw that in there because y'all hear me singing, singing songs. Amen. And so I want y'all to know these are songs that was pre-approved by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so, um... Y'all, I done got lost in my own sauce. So, the, lost in my own sauce, flavor, bars, period. And so the point is that as a wife, desire, desire the presence of God. You being a worshiper, you being a person that can just pray and carry God's presence when I tell you your husband's entire life will change. That's the best gift you can give your husband is your relationship with God, the scent of his fragrance and the favor, the mercy, everything that comes with it. Because when you come with glory, you're going to cause things to move fast in your husband's life. I'm just saying this is revelation. Read your word to gain the same understanding. So what is the overall point of my teaching today? So your marriage with him, when you unify with God. He unifies you. So this is for people who are currently married and you're experiencing issues because maybe one of y'all are bowed down to God and the other person isn't. You sitting there talking and yelling at them and trying to get them to go to church and doing X, Y, and Z. That's not your assignment. Imagine it this way. This is a charging block, right? Y'all know how y'all got them charging blocks that got things that come out on both sides. This is the charging block. This is you and your connection. This is your husband and his connection. And God is in the middle. As you connect yourself with God, the Lord is going to do what needs to be done over here. Okay. To ensure that there's a full connection, a full circuit going on. It's reminding me of physics and it actually brings back bad memories because I did not like physics lab. But the whole point is this, is that when the wife is united with God, there's that bond there, but also the husband united with God. God will unify you. God in the midst is what brings unification together. So don't you be so focused on, oh, I got to make him unify. I got you don't got to make him do anything. You connect to the source because as you connect to the source, God's going to cause a force to pull him. To pull him in. Hallelujah. And so another thing, single people, that's for the married people. And people that's about to get married, that's a lesson. But then also, for those of you who are single, may you understand that you need to be unified with God. You have to be unified with God because your protection comes from that place. Your provision comes from that place. Everything you need comes from that place. It's no reason for you to um, try and give your heart to somebody else. Just give your heart to God because God already gave you his. And when you give God your heart, he he opens you up to things that you would have never seen. And I'm telling you guys wisdom from the Holy Ghost. This is all wisdom that he downloaded within the last hour before this teaching, an hour and a half, two hours. Because he wants you to understand. And this is where the prophetic release is. You see, whoever came up on here talking sideways up out of their neck they came to distract you 
because I'm here to tell you today, the Lord brought me on assignment to release his daughters into their marriages. How can I do so? Because I, I am a wife. I am a wife. And the Lord sent me on assignment today to make sure that you are released into your marriage. So, Father, I give this life to you. I give these daughters to you whom you have spoken and whom you have directed here. That they be released, oh God, into their marriage season. Father, those that are actually crossing over into their marriage doors, Father, anything that is holding them back from crossing the threshold right now in the name of Jesus, may it be broken. Father, I pray for those who are afraid to date, for those who are afraid to respond to that message. Oh God, Lord, may you be the force that pushes them into their land of promise. Father, may you uh, continue to remind them that the old has passed away and that you are doing a new thing. Father, I pray for those who are uh, walking over into their marriage season where they're being prepared to be a wife. God, I pray, oh Lord, that there be a greater dispensation of your Holy Spirit upon their lives to cause them, oh Lord, to not only come into relationship with the Holy Ghost, but to come into a closer communion with you. Father, I pray over these wives. I pray, oh Lord, that they care the force of Esther. Father, I pray that they carry the force of Esther, oh God. May everywhere they go, people do things for them that they wouldn't do for other people. Father, everywhere they go, may their force of your presence, may the force of favor cause things to shift and change. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that every stronghold that has been lifted up against their mind, every stronghold of lust, every stronghold of perversion, whatever it is, oh God, Father, you are able to break all things. And God, we give these marriages to you. I give these daughters to you today, oh God. Release, 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 you have been released into your marriage and the Lord says that it is so. And the Lord says that it is so. I see the Lord just going like this. Release, 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 release. He's moving quickly. Some of you that the Lord has already told you that this is your marriage season. You didn't know. And I'm talking to people that didn't just read the title and was like, oh my gosh, like I should listen to that. I'm talking to people where the Lord said, you got to make sure that you are on this live today. I'm telling you, your husband is coming. Your husband is coming. Your husband, so within the next three months, a lot of you are going to come back and testify and say, Sunray, I ain't have no activity. I ain't have no contact. And out of nowhere, somebody reached out to me. I'm telling you this by the spirit of God. I'm telling you this by the spirit of God. Some of you have to prepare yourself. God says it's going to be like a storm. It's going to not a bad storm, but like, you know, like something that just overwhelms you is going to overtake you. A sudden unexpected love. The Lord says it is so. It is so. Again, the Lord has already spoken to you concerning this. Today you've been released. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know I only spoke to the wives on that part, but that was the thing the Lord told me to do. And I pray for those of you that the Lord has been preparing you, that you desire the spirit of a wife, that you desire and pursue holiness, pursue God. Look, you got to realize, I remember when the Lord was speaking to me about this season and all this other stuff, I cried out to him because your entire life is about to change. Some of y'all, y'all going to get married and that same night you're going to give birth. Your life changes the day that person contacts you. It's no longer just you and God. God grieves giving his daughters off to their husbands. Trust me. He grieves it because he knows that things have changed. Some of you, that's confirmation. The Lord has already told you that. And so if God has been telling you, our relationship not going to be the same. God has already put you in your marriage. It may not be physically here, but that's because when it comes, it's going to it's going to smack you in the face. You know how that what's that movie? You say like uh, so good and make you want to smack your. Yeah. Amen. And so some of you have to conceptualize the fact that it's no longer going to be just you and God. 
that in itself should give you more desire to be in his presence. Because now God has given somebody else authority over you. And you have to submit. And so I feel a release. That's the teaching for today, family. And so as far as um, I pray that it has blessed you guys. You know, the Lord, he didn't tell me until whenever I posted it that he wanted me to do a teaching on this today. And so I pray that it has blessed you. I pray that you were able to follow along with it. I'm going to put um, the sewing information in the chat in a second. Um, by no means, though, do you feel I mean, do I feel do you have to sew? By no means do you have to sew. But um, we don't go into the presence of the Lord empty handed. Amen. And so um, make sure that you um, oh, this is a whole side note. But when y'all sow seeds, can y'all please keep a record of seeds? Um, I do not have Zell. I do not have Zell. So anybody who sent money to Zell, it should be getting returned back to you within 21 days because I don't have Zell. I only have Cash App and PayPal. OK, um, and I'm, I was going to say I'm not even using Venmo, so we're not even going to talk about that. And so, um, oh, my gosh, my skin is glowing. Why do it look like I got blush on? Come on, God. But um, y'all see that? It looks like I got blush on. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh. And so, um, yeah, what I was saying is, please make sure y'all keep track of y'all seats. I will show y'all my phone, but I don't got it with me. It's over there. I need y'all to go to y'all notes app. If y'all sow a seed into me, y'all sow a seed into somebody, please keep track of your seeds. Because when you see the seeds, what begins to happen is like today, the Lord had me sow into something. I was able to go back and see that the last time I sold this type of a seed, it increased. So the Lord was like, I've increased you. And the reason why I'm telling you this, if I was not doing that, like or like I said, when something happens in my life, I can go back and look at all the times I sold into that thing because I don't I don't I don't just be sowing just to sow money. OK, I don't just be sowing just to sow, period. No. If God ain't telling me, I wait because some the amount is the amount is prophetic. The time you sow is prophetic. Everything you got to be diligent. And so when I hear the Lord say, nope, it's actually supposed to be this amount. And you're supposed to say this, because when you go back and you begin to see that thing manifest in your life, you see the seed that connects to it. So it teaches you how to be a sower in the kingdom of God. There are people that have their own thoughts about sowing seeds. I'm not here to give you a dissertation to make you do anything. But what I'm telling you, some of y'all just be sowing and y'all don't keep track of what you've sold. Some of y'all need to go back in your cash app, type, okay, I sold this on this day to this person and this is what it said. I sold on this day to this person and this is what it said. Because you don't, you got harvest that's coming forth, but how can you even claim a harvest if you don't even know what you sold into? Some of y'all just be sowing just to be sowing. And I'm telling you this from authority in the spirit. Encounters I've had with sowing. You have to be, it's a strategic thing. You're not just throwing money. Now, if you want to offer things to people, be like, hey, like God just told me to give this to you, Sunray. Like this is just out of obedience or God told me to give this to X to the church. This is just an offering. This is just, that's that. But what I'm speaking of, I'm speaking of seeds because seeds have growth associated with them. And when you sow into fertile ground, expect, um, what do you call it? Speed. Speed. Because when that soil begins to take form, when God waters that soil, like I told y'all in the previous teaching, every seed sown in that ground begins to sprout. You'll begin to see things happen in your life. Again, I'm not telling y'all to sow into me, but I'm teaching you something that will help you in your sowing. Because you begin to see some of y'all some like, I don't see nothing happen in my life. But you sold 10 months ago a two dollar seed into a ministry to have, I don't know, a new job. Ten months later, the job springs forth. So now you see how the seed connected to that. Does that make sense? And I wouldn't be a teacher if I didn't tell y'all. 
Amen. So I would be a liar. Hallelujah. And so, um, yeah, a lot of y'all, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. So he told me to tell y'all. The Holy Spirit said that you're about to have fire come on you. I feel him increasing. That word that I mentioned this morning, a greater dispensation of his spirit, you're going to have the fire of God come upon you. The fire of God is going to come upon you. Some of you are about to begin to experience the fire of the Holy Ghost manifest in different areas of your body. It is because see, some of you were held up. Y'all were supposed to be in cross your marriage door. And I'm talking about marriage door. When I speak of marriage door, I mean like you don't walk through the land of being prepared for marriage. And now it's time for you to meet the person. It's time for you to get on the other side to await the appointed time for the person to show up. Some of you were held back, but we break off all delay today that has been broken. When I tell you, look, I'm telling you this by the spirit of the Lord. This is not my flesh. The Lord knows that the marriage is very close to my heart, which is why y'all rarely see me post or talk about it. I literally have to be hit upside the head by the Holy Spirit to get on here and talk about marriage because I know it's close to my heart. It's close to my heart. And I can admit that as a voice of the Lord, that when something's close to your heart, it is room for error. It is room for the enemy to come in. So you, it has to go through multiple filters before we come on here to y'all. Amen. And so with that being said, I'm not telling you this to make you feel good. I'm not telling you this to sow. I'm telling you this by the spirit of the Lord. I'm telling you this by revelation. Some of you, the Lord has been telling you, prepare, prepare, prepare. You don't know. Like I've, I've heard of testimonies where the guy comes in and he's like, I'm ready to go. Like within three months, y'all married. All gas, no brakes. Can you imagine what month is this? By May being married? Yeah, that puts something in your brain. You're like, oh, dang, God. And so the whole point is that the Lord is uh, putting fire on you all. Amen. On fire, you're going to begin to experience fire. Hallelujah. Yesha kanda basso. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <sighs> so if this teaching has blessed you, it's 370 y'all in here and it's only 237 likes. We need to run up them likes. In the name of Jesus, run it up. We need y'all to go to um, Instagram, follow both Instagrams, okay? The Healing Prophecy, follow follow my personal page, but then also follow Sunray Worships. And we need y'all to be subscribed to the worship because look, I'm going to say this and I'm going I'm to digress. It's crazy how many people will flee to a prophetic word, but won't sit 15, 20 minutes listening to worship. What do we talk about today? Your worship outside of your marriage is how you will uh, sustain worship inside of your marriage. If you come into your marriage and you're not a worshiper, you're just saying, okay, enemy, come in. Do what you want to do. And I'm not saying worship in terms of just singing. I'm saying worship in time uh, in terms of spending time with God. Amen. And no, I do not follow back. Somebody asked, do I follow back? No, I don't. I, I won't follow back on either page, being honest. I won't. So, um, especially the summary worships. Now, with some people, I do follow back on the watch call that I know, but I will be completely honest. No, I will not. So if you're one of them people that's like, oh, I got to follow you, got to have follow back. Don't even bother. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I just want you to be in all the places so that you can see how God moves because you never know when God is going to post something somewhere and it may be for you and you might miss it, especially if the Lord has told you to be a part of the ministry. And I promise you, I will not take it personally if you don't follow me. Amen. But I'm a real person. Okay. I will be lying if I tell, oh, I follow you back. I don't tell. I can't even lie. God don't even let me lie. So yeah, I just had to tell you the truth. There you go. So, um, <laughs> I just did a whole dissertation on that, but, um, yeah, so I pray that, um, I'm gonna put it in the chat again. Oh my gosh. 
My face looks like I have blush on. This is so funny. Yep, Sunray Worship is on YouTube. Yep, that's on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, amen. So let's just sing a little bit. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We thank you for your ways. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We give our lives to you. We give our souls to you. Father, we give our all to you. Father, we give our souls to you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we worship you. Father, we honor you. We give you our souls. We give you our hearts. Hallelujah. All that I have belongs to you. All that I am belongs to you. Without you, there's no me. Without you, there's no me. Father, I give my heart to you. Lord, I give my soul to you. It is yours. It is yours. Father, I give my heart to you. Lord, I give my soul to you. It is yours. God, it is yours. Father, I give. Father, I give. Father, I give my heart to you. Father, I give, Father, I give, Father, I give my soul to you. Father, I give, Father, I give, Father, I give my heart to you. Lord, I worship you in spirit and truth. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Down me. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall down on me. Consume me. Mm. Consume me with your fire, Lord. Consume me, oh Lord, hey, consume me, consume me, may I always seek your presence, may your fire live in me. May I desire your spirit, feel me. May I always hold 
hold your fire may your spirit live in me may you keep me comforted and be the only thing i see i'll set my eyes i'll set my eyes i'll set my eyes on you i'll set my eyes on you hallelujah i'll set my eyes on you when the blessings come through i i i won't forget you i won't forget you oh oh lord may i always may i always hold your fire may i always hold your fire may my heart always burn for you May my soul always yearn for you. May my heart learn from you. Hallelujah. May my ears, they turn to you. Hallelujah. When the blessing comes, may I not turn away. When the blessing comes, may I not go astray. When the blessing comes, may I stay at your feet. Oh, I, yeah. When the blessing comes, may I sacrifice it back to you, giving you my first fruits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May I give you my first fruits. Hallelujah, the first fruit of the courtship in Darabasoya, the first fruit of the dating, the first fruit of the engagement, hallelujah, the first fruit of the marriage, hallelujah, and the first fruit of each day, May I wake up early just to spend time with you, hallelujah. May I never lose sight of you, hallelujah. May I always keep my eyes on you, Lord, hallelujah. May you keep my fire burning, hallelujah. May you keep my fire burning, hallelujah. May you keep my fire burning, hallelujah. Burning for you, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May you keep my fire burning. May you keep it burning, hallelujah. May you keep it burning for you, Handa Orandi Arabasi. May you keep it burning for you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Handa Basoya. May I wake up at the beginning of my day before I scroll or get in someone else's face. May I seek you, give you my first fruits, hallelujah. May I bow before your throne. May I make your heart your read in my home, hallelujah. May I always desire you, hallelujah. May I always desire you, hallelujah. May I always desire you. May I always give you my first fruits. May I always give you my first fruits. Hallelujah. May my heart always be reserved for you. I'll keep a parking spot in my heart with your name on it. Nobody else can go there. Handa basoya. God is reserved for you. Handa basoya. You can park your glory there. You can park your presence there. Hallelujah. You have a permanent parking spot in me. Hallelujah. 
you have, you have a permanent parking spot in me. Hallelujah. Your glory can rest here. Your glory can dwell here. Your spirit can reverse here. Hallelujah. And so I've reserved a space for you. Hallelujah. So God, send a text and say you're on your way. You're coming through. It will be open for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I get that child, I won't lose sight of you. Hallelujah. When I get that child, I won't lose sight of you. Hallelujah. When I get that marriage, I won't lose sight of you. Hallelujah. When I get that DM, I won't lose sight of you. Hallelujah. When I become a wife, I won't forget you. But instead, my entire marriage will be turned to you. Hallelujah. We will submit our lives to you. Hallelujah. We will worship together with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. When you get what you want Don't forget me Don't forget me When you get what you wanted Cause I'll Cause I'll forget you Scripture says that God won't forget you, but he won't forget those who are inscribed on his hand. I've heard of so many stories of people saying <clears throat> that they forgot God when they got married, when they got the blessing and it was taken away. You see, I think there's a different type of a forgetfulness because when you notice the people would repent, it was like God would remember them. So I feel like it's a temporary forgetfulness. Amen. I just wanted to say that I'm not saying like he don't know who you are, but I'm saying like people that are in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> so I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me today, family. This was a lot. Whew, that was well deserved. But um, yeah, that concludes today's teaching. Whatever else the Lord was doing while I was teaching. Amen. And so. Um, I pray that you share this teaching. If you got friends that are single. Or even people that are married. It's really for everybody. But. Um, share this with some people. Because. And honestly I don't really got to tell you to share it. Because God already going to share it. Amen. But. Um. The Lord, he's equipping us for the assignment that's up ahead. And I'm not just talking about the assignment as a wife. I'm speaking about the assignment as God's wife as well, like an earthly wife, but also as God's wife. Because as the church, there are things that we have to do. And so I pray that just as much as you probably resonated with this teaching, either with your current earthly marriage or upcoming earthly marriage, that you also look at it as a point of or you take it as a point of introspection to give you a more reflective uh, mirror, give you a mirror to uh, figure out your relationship with God. Amen. Because um, I'm not telling y'all, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm tired of seeing that. I'm not telling y'all to be perfect because some of y'all take that as a license to use God's glory or God's grace as a, a permission to do wrong. So do better. <laughs> this is Big Sister Sunray telling you, do better. <laughs> Hold yourself to a standard. Because if not, the enemy, he going he gonna, to he gonna come in and ain't no standard going to be raised because you're going with him. <laughs> y'all both being swept away with the flood. <laughs> Hey, that's actually not funny, but that is kind of funny because God, y'all read the word. You know, it's a standard that's required of you. If you talking to somebody because you bored and you like, God, I'm tired of waiting. Please repent and get back in relationship with God. And that's out of love. 
silence, I would not be a voice of the Lord if I didn't tell you that you have to make your effort known to God. God, I am not, I am not entertaining anyone that you did not tell me to entertain. Because what are you yoking yourself with? What what he gonna do? Does can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody do me like the Lord. <laughs> and so, you know, um, I remember back in the day people could say stuff without being canceled or whatever. But honestly, I really don't care what you gotta say. I'm telling you this out of love. Don't give your pearl away to a pig. Don't. And you can use pearl to represent a whole lot of things. I just want you guys to be able to have God's best. And sometimes to be able to have God's best, you're going to have to pull back from the rest. Amen. And so um, I'm excited, though, because um, I'm going to be getting some wedding invites. Amen. And, and y'all better invite me to the wedding. I better not get no, oh, sorry. I mean, I didn't say I was coming, but I still want to invite because, you know, sometimes I can't come. But the whole point is that um, I'm going back to my other point because somebody said, yes, don't cash your pearl before swine. The reason why I'm saying this is because there are things that I wish I knew when I was entering into my process for this thing with a marriage with God and an actual one. Amen. And so I'm trying to tell y'all certain things. You get bored, you get lonely, read your Bible, shoot, eat some donuts. I know eating is not a good thing, but shoot, I would rather you eat some food than for you to be going somewhere else. Okay. And eating some food that ain't for you. Okay. And so, um, we all adults here, (laughs) but my point is, is that, um, Men to pray before you start seeking people and please actually get confirmation before you just start DMing people. Oh, the Lord told me you my wife. If I had a dollar for every time I got that message and I'd be like, Lord, I rebuke it because it ain't none of y'all. I'm sorry, but it's not. I just had to say that here. So don't y'all be sending me no messages saying that y'all my husband because you're not. Okay, you're not. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. (laughs) And leave my sisters alone too. <laughs> Get in relationship with the Lord before you start messaging people. <laughs> Cause some of y'all are literally out here on assignment by Satan. <laughs> hey, just know I'm saying that with love. Like for real. Please don't message me because you will be blocked. <laughs> hey, look, sometimes the, the, the flesh does creep through. <laughs> Just know I love you. It's all love in the name of Jesus. But don't be bugging my sisters unless the Lord has told you. Okay. Period. And so, uh, (laughs) I love you all so much. (laughs) Y'all, y'all know I am funny. I pray people don't take offense to it, but please stop doing it. Oh, you know, I just know you thinking wrong. That's your first problem. You thinking. Okay, I'm going on a tangent. But um, I know I'm not the only person that has gone through that. And I'll just be like, it's not you. It's not you. How do I know? Because I know. Okay. And so (laughs) I love you all so much. And for real, for real, I'm logging off because now I'm starting to just get fleshly and just say stuff that is just (laughs) true but um, don't need to be said online, amen? Because I ain't editing it. So if people come back and see it and you feel like it was for you, it's for you, okay? Just just make sure you don't just be doing it. All right, all right. I love you so much. And you know, one thing I love about God is that he calls us to be ourselves. Amen. So guarantee when y'all come here, you're going to get a little jokey joke. You're going to laugh. You may receive some conviction, never condemnation. But um, I just want you all to uh, hold yourself to the standard of holiness, have a, a, a true relationship with God, have desire intimacy. Ladies, carry the glory of God. Amen. Carry the glory of God so that your husband, without a doubt, he going to be like, oh, I know you, my wife. God ain't even said nothing, but you came into my life in all this favor. Amen. And so... <laughs> I'm reading y'all comments. Y'all are so funny. But no, for real. Um, The point is that you have a relationship with God first. 
And so these are, uh, this is what the Lord wanted me to teach today. And again, I pray I bless you. Some information is somewhere. It's on the website. It's, it's on one of the descriptions of some of the videos. It's everywhere. You'll find it if you are led to sow. Uh, and that's that. The Lord is telling me it's time for me to get off because I feel like I'm going to have a whole comedy show. And today I'm not a comedian. I'm called to be or operate in the prophet today. So that, that's what we're doing. We're operating in the prophetic apostolic call today. And so I'm just, you know, um, I need to go. Love y'all, and I'll talk to you later.